What's up everyone, Nethervoid here with another video. Thought you'd probably never see this. I, keep, I say this a lot, this channel is coming on a lot. We will talk about that in a minute. What you're looking at right here is EverQuest, the original 1999 EverQuest. This is on a live server. I was gonna record something today for the start of a new series, but it's April 1st and now we're all gelatinous cubes. So, uh, seems like that isn't possible. Uh, except this guy, he's just invisible apparently. Weird. Anyway, so I just thought that'd be neat to show you that we're all gelatinous cubes today. And, and this is not an April Fool's video. This is a real video that I'm putting out. Uh, this is not a joke. Uh, but what I did want to show you is I will be starting a new series in EverQuest, the original EverQuest, 1999 version on live servers, which we'll get into in a second, using these three characters and three mercenaries. This is a return to EverQuest. And it's mostly for people who have been away. I mean, if you, if you play the game, great. Let me know in the comment section uh, what server you play on and what and what you love about it or whatever. But this video is mainly for people who are thinking about returning. Um, you know, this series is for that. So um, without further ado, this party is going to be called the OGs because um, I have two accounts out of these three accounts that are really old. And we'll again, we'll get all in, into this. This video is just going to be video zero, kind of setting everything up, um, what, what's going to be going on, why, blah, 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 blah. And then episode one, which I can't record today because we're all gelatinous cubes, will be the actual gameplay uh, and leveling and things like that. So the OGs going to have three um, real characters. These are three different accounts that I will be linked together. And again, if you're, brand, if you're coming back to EverQuest and you haven't thought about it for... 20 something years. EverQuest is a 25 year old game now. It's its 25th anniversary this year. You probably aren't going to understand what I'm talking about here, and I'll get into that. It's pretty simple ish. Um, so, Nether is the is my level 71. And as you can see here, I got some extra information over here that won't really be applicable to other parties if I do more of these. But he's currently level 71, and I've got probably the most time on this guy. I think I've got like 50 days played or something like that on this character. Um, but in the party, he's going to be main tanking and main assisting. Um, if you know anything about EverQuest, you know that it's got a six-person party system. And almost all the content in EverQuest is group content. There's almost no solo content. Um, and that's why I'm setting up a party to tackle content, right? Um, so now there's going to be the main tank. Uh, I tanked with this guy all the way up, uh, almost through all of Planes of Power back in like 2004. Uh, it was a lot of fun. And I just got burned out because it was a lot of work. Ter tertiary roll, DPS light, I want to say, because paladins are not known or tanks are not known for their DPS, right? So DPS light, I will be DPSing when I'm not doing anything else, okay? Uh, character two is really her name was Brenna, but when Solosec Row and Bristlebane and a couple other ser they've had server mergers over time. And so uh, Brenna had three X's added to her name, kind of weird. They keep asking me if I want to do a name change. I keep declining. I think the name's pretty cool. She will be main heals. Druid is not great for main healing, but we're going to try to, to, to do it. We're going to see if she can main heal this group. Uh, well, you, can, you can also see that Nether's Mercenaries can be a cleric, so backup heals, so we'll be fine. Um, Brenna is also going to be the travel, is her secondary role, to get us around with group travel, things like that. Uh, and then, obviously, she'll be doing some DPS when she's not healing. She is currently a level 37. Uh, this is my oldest account. So this account, I, again, we'll get into this in a second. I'll, I'll get into that later. Third character, Eowyn, Enchanter. Uh, she's going to be for CC, which if you haven't ever played EverQuest, CC means uh, crowd control. Um, in a lot of the games since I would say WoW, there haven't really been, there have been no, no crowd control uh, archetypes, right? There's been the Holy Trinity, Tank, Heal DPS, right? That's really from WoW forward. That's pretty much what every game has had. In EverQuest, there was also CC. There's actually a couple other roles, and we'll get into those in a minute. Um, actually, if you think about it, the fourth role of Nether will be Puller. A Puller is another role in a group um, that you don't see in a lot of other games. Um, so CC is when usually groups can take a certain amount of mobs in the, gr in the group camp at a time. So like, I don't know, two or something like that. Or maybe just one if the mob is hitting really hard. And so the role of CC is to keep the other mob locked down until the party is finished with the mob it's working on, right? Then it can switch to the other mob. Um, so that's what the role of CC is. So that's going to be in the uh, Enchanter Eowyn. They're very good at CC. 
Um, and then she'll be doing some some DPS when she's not CCing, which we'll, we'll see how that works out. Again, I haven't played this game in a long time in a group capacity, so I'm going to be learning as I go. Again, I'm a returning player too. So that's why this is kind of for returning players, right? Now, to round out the group with six, we're going to have each of these characters will have a mercenary. A mercenaries are just part of the game now. It's Everybody has a mercenary. Usually they're on all the time. And again, that's because this is a group-centric game, and a lot of the content in this game is not full of players to the point where you can just find a group whenever you want. Um, back when this game first came out, uh, it, it did have... Uh, enough players in all the zones there weren't that many zones right so the player base wasn't super spread out and so you could find groups like this all you know pretty much anytime you wanted which was kind of nice now that's gone so each of these characters can have one mercenary and you can pick what kind of mercenary you want there are like three or four choices ish uh, again i'm kind of returning so i might not have perfect information on a lot of the stuff if you there are corrections please put them in the comment section i please do that uh, so that you veterans that are playing now can help the returning players or people who are brand new kind of catch up to speed. There's a lot to un know about this game. It's part of the reason we want to play it again, actually. So we've got Nether's Mercenary will be a backup healer, cleric backup heals, probably also doing uh, resurrections and things like that. And then Brenna and Aowen, since they're more DPS and or healers, they're going to have DPS mercs, which is also going to help the leveling process. Because as you know, Aowen actually is my newest character on my newest account. She's only level 11 right now. So there's a little bit, there's a lot of, there's kind of a large level gap right now in, in these characters. And we're going to have to rectify that just like you normally would if you're a returning player. Uh, and again, you'll see how to do that. So it's, uh, it's not, this, this playthrough is not going to be a typical create three characters, party up, run all through the game with the same three characters. There's going to be some catch up in the beginning and then we'll all meet up around the final meetup will be around level 50-ish to pick up Nether at 71. Uh, so um, we'll go into these other things like birthdays of my characters and things like that in a minute. Uh, well, let's just get into the talking points here. Now, obviously, if you don't like what we're doing right here, with I'm, uh, the new thing I'm trying to do with my channel is I'm just posting videos that I like. If I like talking, I'm going to post it. Um, if I want to play a game, I'm going to post the game. Now, there'll probably be series, right? They won't just be a one-off. But generally speaking, I'm just going to post videos that I like. The problem I've had with YouTube over since the World of Tanks kind of ended for me, and really also Minecraft, I guess, is that I, I don't want to be locked into posting something that I don't really want to do. I, I don't want YouTube to be a job for me. I want it to be a hobby. My regular job, I make plenty of money. I don't need more. Would, not extra money would be nice yeah sure it would yeah, that'd be great but like i don't need it so i'd rather do something for fun and then i'll keep doing it right instead of getting burned out and oh i gotta post a you know x amount of videos or whatever um let me move my camera it looks like it's going over to some of the talking points here let's move it over a little bit cool uh, and then i got to do this transitionary thing i'm using obs for those of you who do youtube there we go so i'm back because i can't stay away from content creation i'm back on my main original channel because I don't care anymore. If I get views, great. I want views, obviously. I want more subscribers, obviously. But I'm here to have fun, and I'm here to hopefully give you content that you enjoy. That's it. If people enjoy it, they will subscribe. Uh, please do if you enjoy this. And if you want to see this, please subscribe. Uh, please like it. That also helps. It does help. Please help the channel. That That's nice, right? But I don't need it right, to keep going. I'm just going to play, post what I like. And it's hard for me to stay away from YouTube I've been doing it for over like 12 years now, and I really enjoy it. It's just hard to stay away. I've got a couple other projects I might, may or may not do if I really like to do them. Another thing I have a problem with is I kind of force myself into larger projects than I really want to do because I, I don't think they'll land and I don't think they'll grow and all this other stuff that doesn't matter. None of that has to do with my enjoyment as much as just posting the videos that I want. So that's what I'm doing from now on. Um, I will probably be setting up a Patreon streaming, that kind of stuff. If I want to, if I don't, I won't like, I'm not going to force myself. I'm not pigeonholing myself this time. So again, I've already talked about, this is a returning game, gameplay perspective. You're going to see, like, I'm going to go into zones that I've never been in. Um, I really stopped playing. I've played most of the original, obviously that's where I spent most of my time. Probably the other, most of my other time has been probably in, uh, Vishan up to Planes of Power and a little bit of Gates of Discord. Uh, 
other than that, I haven't played a lot. And then, oh, lots of Dungeon uh, Dragons and Norath. I played that a lot too. Um, other than that, I haven't played a lot. So that's like there's still like twenty something expansions for me to explore. We are going to be going through kind of the returning player perspective on what like if if you want to return this game is really difficult to get back into. I've already tried to return to it at least one other time, and I couldn't do it because I just couldn't get my head wrapped around the new information and how to find things to do, et cetera, et cetera. So this is kind of, uh, if, if you want to return or just thinking about it or want to see it, this is kind of the series for you. And we'll get into why I'm kind of playing this super old game in a minute here. So again, I'm going to assume that you've played EQ before, EverQuest before, to a certain extent, you know, um, like how to target, all that kind of stuff. If you played any MMOs, you click the target most of the time. I don't even know if you can tab target. I'm going to try to figure that out. I hope you can. Uh, but I don't remember how to do that. Um, but I am going to explain the newer things that are new to the game. If you only really played way back in like Planes of Power and you haven't played since then, I'm going to explain all the new stuff that I've been learning to um, get myself back in the game. I will try to play these characters all the way up to the max, which is what, level 125 right now. Um, I don't know if that's going to happen. It might take a long time and I might get bored. I don't really know, but I'm going to try my best. I like to see through my playlist, like my pl playthroughs. Um, speaking of that, it's not on the thing, but I will be firing up and moving over my Factorio open play through that I had going. I think it was on episode 31 there. Um, I have a couple open playlists on my other channel. We'll move all that stuff over slowly over time and finish those out too. I'm going to be skipping the glooming deep tutorial. That's the new ish tutorial. Um, that you'll go through if you start a new character. It gets you about up to level 10 and kind of teaches you just the very basics of the game, like the UI, questing, spells, stuff like that. Um, it's boring to me. Uh, it's pretty long. It takes a few hours to get through. And I've just played it, I don't know, four or five times and I'm bored of it. In fact, I'm getting kind of bored of Crescent Reach, which is the follow-on to Glooming Deep, but we're going to play through it anyway because I want to get some gear and I want to show it to you. But the tutorial is there if you want to play it. I mean, it, again, it takes a few hours, gets you re to the game. Um, it's pretty good. And it's for, for brand new players, too. It can help you out. So um, play it if you feel the need or if you haven't played it before. It'll get you also a decent set of starting gear. It's not very good, actually. When you get stuff from um, Crescent Reach, it'll be way better. And I'll show you that in a little bit. So my tutorial stuff will simply be reiterating the things I've learned as I've come back to EverQuest. Uh, again, if you're playing, you've been playing forever, and you've played all through 30 expansions, you have all this knowledge, please post it in the comment section, not only to help the playthrough, but also to help people learn that are trying to return to EverQuest. But I think there's kind of a resurgence now of these older games, and I'll talk about that in a little bit and why. I'll be cutting out the boring stuff as much as possible. This video is probably a lot of boring stuff to most people. It's no gameplay or anything. Um, but I will probably be trying to cut out the grinding and or what I'll do during grinding, if I have to do some grinding, is I'll probably talk about current events, um, things that are going on now, especially if it's gaming related, uh, to pass time in a sense, like I did for um, Elite Dangerous' space trucking series that I did a long, long time ago, where I just got, all it was was going back and forth between stations trading. It was really boring gameplay. But we talked about some current events like when like when Spock died from Star Trek. I can't Lin, Leonard Nimoy died. Um, that was kind of a big deal when that series was going on. We talked a lot about that. Uh, so it will probably have some times like that. All three of my accounts are now uh, I was going to have one of them be free to play for a while, but they're now all access. There's they have subscriptions. There's monthly subscription. Um, EverQuest is a free to play game and you get a lot of content for free. But there are certain things you can't do as you get toward the newer content without a subscription. So I just went up and subscribed all my accounts. It's not cheap. It's $15 a month for each account. But it is what it is. Again, I make enough money to do that for a hobby, so it's fine. Um, you could probably get away with if playing three free accounts for a while doing what I'm doing, going to be showing you. Boxing is what they call it in EverQuest, where I play three accounts at the same time. You could probably do that on free accounts. But uh, to a certain point, till you see that, hey, I like this, you know, then you're probably going to start paying. Now, uh, going back to that point, um, well, I, we'll get into the play style in a second. I'm not sure if I'll ever join a guild. I just want a game to level up in and play through and have a good time in the leveling process on the journey process. I'm kind of tired of raiding and raiding is what I mean, I've been raiding since. Again, like 2004, before that even, I raided in WoW for a while, raided in WoW after that even. 
Um, I'm kind of bored of raiding. Um, I might raid. I don't know. I mean, usually you need a guild for raiding, usually. But when I'm boxing accounts, I don't really need other players. So even though this is a social game, I'm just going to play it sort of as a multiplayer plus game where I can interact with the market is really why I want to play this game. But yeah, I might join a guild. We'll see. I don't know. Again, I'm not going to... I'm not going to set expectations too far in the future because I don't know if I'm going to change my mind and then I want to do something else and have fun in a different way. Highly unlikely, again, that I'll do any raiding. Uh, raiding, again, takes a lot of time, two, three nights a week at least. You've got to grind for plat or to get consumables. I don't like doing that. Um, so we'll see if I do raiding. The last time I did raiding was Lost Ark. I really enjoyed it, but again, it consumed a lot of my time and I just don't know if I want to spend that much time on it. I might add in a weekly stream. Like I said, I'm not really sure. Depends on what I want to do. I might add in Patreon. I might do special things. I might do guides. I might not. I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm just going to do what I want to do, what's exciting to me, what makes me excited to record. That's what I'm going to do. I'm recording this video because I'm excited about recording this video and I'm excited about this playthrough. Okay. Um, and again, like I've been saying, all strategies subject to change. We could change anything I'm going to show you could change. Really quick, let's take a break to go back to what these characters are. This is what they look like right now. Uh, Nether is in... Um, he's got full Deviant. I think it's uh, the highest level of Deviant plate armor you can get, which is, again, all, it's kind of a returning player or newbie set of armor you can get out of the bazaar for pretty cheap, the trading area, right, the marketplace, for fairly cheap, fairly cheap platinum-wise. Um, and you can get in... You kind of can keep yourself... In defiant gear, I think I called it defiant. I might call it something else uh, on accident. But you can you can keep yourself geared that way because leveling in the beginning is pretty fast. Uh, compared, to if you're an old school player, I remember spending a week on level like 45. Uh, it's not that way anymore. You'll see. Um, so Brenna, it went from 32 to 37 in like two nights. Um, I think I played her this this last weekend. So she's 37 now. I, I started her at 32. When I left off her in 1999, she was 32. Again, EON, she's level 11, I want to say, fresh out of Glooming Deep. Uh, I did it with my son, Andrew, Andrew Punk. Boy, if you remember for way, way back in the beginning of this channel, uh, he's playing EverQuest too. He actually picked EverQuest because I was like, I'm thinking of going back to an old MMO. Here are the, here are the choices I have. Which one would you do? And so you know, I said, what do you want to play? Because let's play it together. So that's the group we're going to be doing. Why EQ and why live? Okay. Um, the allure of old RPGs and MMORPGs, I think, is coming back. I think I have this feeling that people, again, tr tell me what you think in the comment section. And we're going to get a little bit of a skewed you know, set of people because people just wanting to play WoW probably aren't watching this video. But because newer MMOs have mostly flopped, like New World and different new MMOs like that, Lost Ark, there's a few other ones. Lost Ark's a great game, but it abuses your play a time. You know, it's kind of a, it's an it's a Asian-based MMO. They have differences in things they like. Uh, you know, Western markets don't like that kind of abuse of time. You know, pay for the cash shop or just grind. You know, we're not into that. But older games like EverQuest, DDO, Dungeons and Dragons Online, um, you know, WoW to a certain extent. Well, WoW is kind of caught up in the newer stuff with the WoW token and things. Well, the abuse of time is is still there in WoW, not as much as Lost Ark, right? But the newer MMOs don't have the appeal of older MMOs. Now, what is the appeal? The appeal to me is EverQuest. Why I keep coming back is it, ha it has a great feeling of accomplishment. The things that you can accomplish in EverQuest are not easy to accomplish. Um, they were harder when it first came out in 1999, kind of obviously, I guess. But like Nether still doesn't even have his Epic 1.0, which is something you get usually when you're like 60, 55 to 60, level 55 to 60. I tried in 2004 to get it, and I just couldn't get it. Um, I have the Soul Fire you can see in the image right there. That's not Fiery Defender. Fire Defender is Epic 1.0. But when I got the Soul Fire, I was so excited to get that sword. Um, the Soul Fire was actually a sword you couldn't even get in the game, and a developer was running around with it one time, kind of talking with people in the game, and he just created it to have fun with. And they're like, whoa, what is that sword? It's on fire. It's so cool. They actually converted it into a quest where you could get it, um, which I thought was really cool. A really difficult quest. You had to kill like raid dragons and other things. It was a very difficult quest chain. Um, 
That's what I like about EverQuest. It's not easy to play. It, the accomplishments feel great because they're not easy. Um, it's not easy. To, well, it's easier to find things now than it used to be. Um, but it used to be you didn't even couldn't even tell what NPCs had quests. You had to hail them and talk to them and figure out if they had quests or not. Um, and so that it's great. It's a great game. It's probably the best game I've ever played for feeling of accomplishment. Some of my best accomplishments happen in EverQuest. Um, wow to a lesser extent i would say too but beating um my favorite raid zone ever which is U ulduar ulduar favorite raid zone ever it's insane i love that raid zone but i will say that the feeling of accomplishment beating those bosses was not the same as beating like em emperor shishazar i think is his name i'll probably put a or no emperor ragzoon or something i'll put an image on the screen of who i'm talking about from Shadows of Lucklin, a really old Effort Quest expansion, where we had eight, I, I want to say 75 or 80 people in the raid to beat that boss. Um, his mechanics were not as complicated as they are now, but coordinating, I want to say six healers on the main tank. I was, no, my friend was main tanking because warriors are better tanks back then. And they probably still are in EverQuest. I, Paladins were never good main tanks, but we had six. We had a group of healers that had to rotate a heal on the main tank to keep it from dying. And they had to time out over every four seconds to click their complete heal. That fizzle, they had to call it out so somebody else could pick it up. And so they had to do it in a, in a chain like that because they would run out of mana. One person can't just chain heal like that. They'll run out of mana and the main tank will die. So they, we had to chain the heals on the main tank and they had to come in and completely full heal him because like three hits would kill the main tank. So it'd be like, hit one, hit two, full heal. Hit one, hit two, full heal. Hit one. It, it, that's just one part of keeping that raid going. Now you're the, we're not even talking about all the ways to position the DPS so that they didn't get tail swiped or you know killed by some AOE or whatever. Hiding behind pillars. and it, you know It's hard enough to do that with 10, 20, 40 people. I'm talking about World of Warcraft right now. But 80 plus people? And that back in the day when there were no raid caps... People had like 120 people, six person groups, right? That's 20 groups of people to coordinate. What are they all going to do? And who should, then they had, you know, ca cascading raid leadership, right? You had the guild, the raid leader, and then you had like DPS leader and heal leader. And then you had breakdowns of group leaders and all this stuff. It was just a lot. But that means when we killed them, oh, and you had to key everyone up for that fight. There was a long process of grinding. With groups every you know every night and grinding it up and getting access, making sure everybody had access, and then when you ran went to the zone, everybody had to be able to enter the zone. If someone could, got left out, I don't know, you try to get a backup or something, or you go without them. But that made the kill for Emperor, whatever his name is. Again, he's on the screen. Uh, made it super important. I still remember that kill. You know, twenty years later or whatever. Um, and e EverQuest has that, and, and it's something I miss in the newer games. The world still feels large. EverQuest, I looked it up, has like 500 zones. It's got 30 expansions. It's huge. There's so much content. You'll never run out of content. So there's going to be plenty, and this series is going to be all about exploring places I've never been as a returning player. Almost everything I'm going to be doing is going to be new. And the reason I'm playing live and not a like a time lock progression server, which is kind of like a classic server if you're a WoW player, um, you know, where they release expansions one at a time, is because I don't want to necessarily relive my experience in EverQuest. I don't even know if you if I could do that because I played every night for six hours. Um, it ruined my. I was 22 at the time, and I had a family, and I had my old Andrew Punk was. Six months old at the time, kind of it kind of ruined our family life. Um, I played every night for six hours, and I can't do that anymore. And I don't want to do that, really. I don't. And I'd li rather just pick off with my old characters and accounts from where I left off. Like I, in just Brenna and Nether, I have over one hundred days played. I think with those two characters combined, days, not hours, days. So that's like twenty four hundred hours or something like that. Um, so I'd like to pick up where I left off. I want soul fire. I don't want to redo soul fire quest and all that. I just want to pick up where I had, what I had and go forward. Um, my old server, my original server from 1999 was solo row. 
that was a German server at the time, actually. Um, I don't know. Everybody's ping sucked no matter what server you're on. So it didn't, I don't even think I noticed that the ping was worse. But uh, now that server is Bristlebane. So we're going to be playing on Bristlebane live server. I like Bristlebane. Uh, I've created Nether on Strom. Strom was the cool server at the time in 2004. But Bristlebane has a really high active player base compared to Strom now. So uh, I actually transferred Nether over to Bristlebane. Um, also, Aowen's account is on Bristlebane. So now all the all three of these accounts are on Bristlebane. What I noticed so far on Bristlebane more than Strom is the newbie areas are pretty populated. You see many, I mean, not they're not like jam-packed, but when you run around, you're seeing multiple players, you know, in these newbie zones. And like they'll run by and give you a buff or you give them a buff. It's really cool. Like the old days, um, some, something you don't see even in, like I don't buff people. And wow, I just let them run by. I don't give a crap. But in this game, people did that. People would run by and buff newbies and help each other out. It was just kind of something we all did. And you see people doing it still on Bristlebane, which I think is pretty cool. For a server that's 25, well, it's not 25 years old. Well, actually, Bristlebane is 25 years old. It's been the one that's eaten the other servers, right? So Bristlebane is an original server from 1999. And there's still newbies and everybody's still friendly. Uh, experience game seem, gain seems really fast. Again, like I said, Brennan went from 32 to 37 in like, like two days of game, you know, I don't know, not even eight hours of gameplay, probably like six. That is insanely fast. Um, it's good because then you get to experience more. You don't just sit there and grind and grind and grind and grind. EverQuest used to be like a kind of a glorified social chat room back then. It was before social media, um, you know, UO, EverQuest and to a certain extent WoW came out before social media and so people chatted in online games because they didn't have Facebook and they didn't have Instagram they didn't even really have they had texting and it was okay right you couldn't have group chat group texts weren't even that big of a thing back then on flip phones you couldn't really do that um so EverQuest was a way to to socialize online in some ways when you're having downtime people would chit chat and stuff that was kind of cool though you know, because like people, that's how you made friends. And, you know, I, I I became really good friends with a lot of people online back then. But uh, anyway, I'm getting way off the topic now. So that's why uh, EverQuest and why the live servers. Quick history of my accounts. I'm not going to spend too much time here. This video is already probably getting really long. Again, I'm probably going to cut a lot of this if it's not interesting. Now, in 1999, I was at launch day in 1999 in EverQuest. I'd already been play, played Ultima Online for a year and a half, almost at that point. And my buddy, in the, I was in the Air Force, and my buddy um, said, hey, have you heard of EverQuest? I tried to get in the beta with him. Somehow I didn't get in. I don't know. I was already a veteran of Ultima Online. You'd think I'd get right in. I think I didn't have a, a 3D graphics card yet, which is why I couldn't. I didn't get in. Because um, I had to buy one to play this game. So it doesn't matter. I bought the box. I set it all up. I played on launch day. Right when the servers came up, I got online. It was, you couldn't even really get on. There were so many people trying to connect. It was having crashes. The typical launch of any game, really. Um, the first account I created was Brenna's account. Uh, that's my oldest account. It's 25 years old. On Solosec Row, German server. And my first character was actually Ibex, a ranger. I played him for three months. And... Um, then I said, I don't like rangers because they suck. And groups didn't want rangers. And I wanted to have more of a solo character I could solo with because I wasn't grouping all the time. Sometimes I just wanted to do my own thing. So I created Brenna uh, in June, which is three months after the launch of EverQuest. Uh, so ditched my ranger. I mean, I still played him, but it was more of an alt at that point. Um, and created Brenna on June 5th. So that's my first account. I played until almost Kunark, which is almost two years into the game. Um, back then, games didn't have expansions, really. Expansions was kind of a new thing. So uh, I played almost to Kunark. I created a, a guild. I actually switched from Brenna, which is... Uh, Druids back then were kind of solo characters, sort of. They weren't great healers in groups, so people would rather have Cleric. Um, but they could solo, right? They could do some soloing. But I wanted to get into groups i wanted to be more social and so i actually created the, the my first paladin avalon which i don't play him anymore got him up to level 34 before i quit the game but i created a guild called order of the telenon created a website back in html back then when to create a website you had to create it by from hand by scratch from scratch uh again we got up to i think 120 um people in that guild we didn't do any rating we mostly did 
grouping and stuff. There wasn't really raiding back then. Uh, they added a couple dragons at the end of the original launch. That was raids. We hadn't got there yet. I Like I said, my main character was level 34 when I quit. It was really hard to... Leveling took forever back then. So uh, it wasn't like... Uh, there was no such thing as race to the end game. The, 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 the game, the, the game was the experience of leveling to max. That was the, that was the fun. And again, that's what we're going to be in the, doing in the series. So I came back in 2004, created a new account because I, I didn't remember the credentials to my old account. I created Nether's account in 2004 on Strom. Again, that was the newest server at the time. It's the most active. I decided to come back to the game with a friend at that time that I was, uh, I was working with. Um, and we started playing, I think he created a new account as well, or maybe he fired up his old one. I don't really know, but we start decided to start a progression raiding guild. Now at that time I was coming out of raiding from, no, that was right before. Wow. Cause I think I, Wrath of the Lich Kings 2008. And so that was when I was mainly raiding. So this is before I played. Wow. And we thought, okay, you know, raiding in EverQuest was different. Every new expansion, you couldn't skip the raids from the previous expansion. Um, not really. You couldn't just jump into the new content and get gear and play the new you know, expansion. You kind of had to level, like grind up through all the previous raid bosses too. To, and there was a raid ladder, right? Just like they have them. I think they still have them now. But the raid ladder for guilds wasn't just the current expansion. It was going back four or five expansions. So when I we started playing, Gates of Discord was out, was the latest expansion. And so there was Gates of Discord, Planes of Power, Luklin, Velius, and Old World bosses. I think Velius was the lowest that was considered. Because you could get on your leveling path up to the max, you could get gear that could let you start Velius rating, I want to say. Or maybe it was Luklin. I think it was Lukeland. I think Omens of War was out, actually. So there were four expansions on the on the tier list. So we started at the bottom. We started raiding through Lukeland. Then we got to the point where we were supposed to kill Vexthal, I think, after we'd have killed the Emperor. But to key to Vexthal was this like, months-long process, like four months or something like that. Nobody really wanted to do it because it was just for one mob. Um, and then we could still raid Planes of Power and get better drops there which would make Vexthal farming kind of pointless um, because there was like an overlap between Planes of Power raiding bosses and, and Vexthal. So we thought, you know what? We're going to skip that. We're going to go right to Planes of Power because everybody wanted to do that anyway. It was a lot more fun. The bosses were more fun. They had learned, you know, the devs had learned a lot from all the raiding up to that point. And Planes of Power was really cool. Planes of Power was almost a whole expansion of just raids. There was like 14 zones and, you know, all these bosses and there's like 20 raid bosses. Um, when before that, the raid bosses would be like four to six raid bosses per expansion. So we went right to the planes of power. We got we got all the way up to the ele elemental planes. So pretty close to the end, I think, if I remember correctly. Then we kind of burned out because it was a lot. When you're you know mobilizing seventy five plus person raids, it, it takes a lot out of you, man. And I just got burned out. So then I didn't play WoW again until twenty twenty two, a couple years ago. I thought I want to play WoW again. I'm sorry, EverQuest. I want to play EverQuest again. I played WoW for a while. played every other game under the sun. I played Lost Ark, all the new ones. And I was like, oh, I just want to play an old you know, EverQuest. I remember the accomplishment from EverQuest. I really liked it. I liked the EverQuest had... One of the main things I like is armor quest lines. And then not only do you have to kill mobs to get the drops, um, and you have to farm mobs to get other drops, right? So there's like a premier drop that you have to farm. The only one dude um, drops... Then you got to farm the materials. Then you got to work your smithing up and craft the item. So when you have the breastplate, people know it took you a while to get it. It's not an easy thing. Um, you, there's a lot of work involved. So it feels like a good, a big accomplishment. I like that EverQuest does that. And I know I'm not sure how much we're going to be able to get into um, armor quest lines. Those are my favorite kinds of quest lines. But we'll see. Hopefully, a lot of them. Um, so I tried. I created account three, my free account, Eowyn's account. I never created characters here because I was like, this account sucks. Um, I wish I could use this account. Actually, I created this account. And then I, I was like, no, let me, I'm going to get my old accounts back because they have veteran rewards, right? They're, they're very old accounts now. 
So I contacted support and went through a lot of back and forth emails because I don't remember what credit card I used 25 years ago. I don't remember. I thought I remember where it was from, who issued it, but I don't know. Um, so back and forth, I gave him enough info that I got both my accounts back. So now I had three accounts, my original account, my nether, like my 2004 account, and my newest account that I didn't play at all. I went and played the nether account because nether was the highest level. He's level 70. So I tried to play nether. Solo wings almost impossible. Obviously, EverQuest is a grouping game, so the, I couldn't really make any progress. I was working on um, a quest line for... Um, for armor at the point then i found out that deviant armor exists i think it's called no defiant armor exists just by dollar bazaar and i just was crushed because the defiant armor was better than the quest armor i was working on so that just removed all the cool desire i had to learn i think cultural armor is what i was trying to craft like it was just for half elves and you had to get the special half elf hammer and you had to learn all the history of half elves and stuff through these quest lines it was so amazing then they're like, oh yeah, just buy just buy a Defiant Armor. It's better than when, when that than that stuff anyway. So that crushed it. I said, you know what? I'm I'm not and I'm not gonna box. I did not want to box. I wanted to play just nether. Didn't want to do boxing. I didn't want to have a whole group because I thought that's stupid. I want to group up with people. So I left again. Two years later, again, I'm like, I'm bored. These new games suck. Like there's no sense of accomplishment unless you're raiding or doing doing what they want you to do. You're pigeonholed into this one thing the game does, and they focus everything onto that because they want to have three developers. They want to have the minimal amount of energy put into the game, with the maximum amount of benefit. It's lazy and crappy, and the quests are boring. Go kill ten rats or some bullshit like that. So I said, screw this. I'm going to find an old game that's fun with good progression, with a that's complicated and fun, and uh, so I picked up EverQuest again, and now I'm just going to embrace boxing because I tried Nether again. I tried to solo with him. Can't really do it. Um, I mean, I can, but it's very tedious. So I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to box. I have I already have three accounts. Um, so I fired up my original account again. I had all the info I needed on them, and I got them now all subscriptions, which again was not cheap. I server transferred Nether. There's another 20 bucks. So I'm already $65 deep into this. Which is what you pay for a new game anyway, so it's cool. So that's why I'm going to do some boxing. Uh, again, Nether was born on May 10th, 2004 on Strom. Gates Discord was the expansion. 20 years old uh, character. Newest character. Uh, I just created AON, AON because I didn't have anything on that account and I need an enchanter. These are all of my original characters anyway. I had a, a paladin, a druid, and an enchanter on my original account. I mean, I still do, but so the the newest expansion is called Lorian, Lorian Song. We won't see that for a long time if I ever see it, but we will see. Um, obviously, zero years old. The account is two years old. I don't really have any veteran awards. from. I, I think you had to be uh, a silver account or better, which we can get into that later. So that's kind of what's going on, and these are the level ranges of my characters right now. 11, 37, and 71, which is actually a lot. So we will see how that goes. Let's talk about boxing. Here's what has helped me embrace boxing, Okay. The EQ game loop has changed. If you're from 1999 all the way up through, I don't know, Planes of Power or something like that, the original gameplay loop is grouping up, hanging out with friends, being in a guild, sort of raiding. Actually, as I get more towards Planes of Power, it's about raiding. It's about um, grouping. Everything's about grouping. Out of character chat, in, in the zone, the zone chat, you know, ha ha, laughing. That's not really how it is anymore, at least in the leveling experience all the way to max. It's about boxing. It's about creating a group of characters that you play by yourself to get through the content. Now, can you find a guild and group with people? Probably. Um, I don't know. I didn't try it. I don't have that kind of time anyway. So I'm just going to embrace boxing. Now, also, there weren't that many quests when the original EverQuest first came out. I know that sounds stupid, but... There just weren't that many. Now every the, everything's questing, man. You can't even do all the quests. You're gonna outlevel stuff anyway. Um, there are quests everywhere. Everything's quest driven. It's pretty amazing. The quests you'll see are very in depth. Um, you don't have to read them all, but the storylines are pretty good actually. Um, and I'll show you when in Crescent Reach, the storyline's pretty fun. So it's now about creating a group by yourself. It's pretty much how it works. So I'm doing that now on time lock progression servers. That is kind of the older experience, right? Get in, group up with people, um, 
you know, all that. The thing though is you got to keep up with the expansion releases. So there is still some grinding going on in that older experience. Um, also, it's challenging. Boxing is challenging. I've never had to do it where I have to coordinate three accounts, uh, coordinate their movements and stuff, and and have it take the least amount of clicks possible and try to be efficient and try not to die, trying to control essentially six characters. Really, it's three, but essentially six. It's going to be a challenge, and I, I think that's going to be kind of cool. Um, also, different servers, like I was saying, have different rules for boxing. Some care uh, some servers like i'm going to box all my characters on the same computer i'm just going to run three accounts you can actually launch multiple clients uh if you do want to do boxing you need to use the um, daybreak games client that's you can't use steam you can play everquest through steam but you can't multi-client through the steam client so if you're going to do boxing which you can start on steam and if you decide to box you can launch the actual um official launcher and then do boxing and use the same account that's fine um so if you just want to get on steam and try it out for free that that's cool uh, it's a much easier way to do it obviously um on some servers you have to have a separate machine for each one of those ca- accounts which obviously that's a big pain in the ass but it is what it is on that server um other servers you can't box a lot of t- time lock pr- progression sh- servers say no boxing so if you're caught boxing your accounts are banned. So those are some of the different rule sets. Again, on Bristlebane, you can do boxing on the same computer. It's fine. Create a group of six. That's what I'm going to be doing. So to do that, the first time, what I'm going to do is level A went up to about level 28, which is when she and Brenna can start to gain experience together. Um, Brenna is 37 right now. So the level gap can be up to two thirds of the max character, I want to say. So that's about 28. We'll see if the, if the experience goes into the dirt, I'll stop and just keep leveling A win separately then brenna and a1 will run around until they're both level 48 and we can join up with nether who is level 71 that's when all three of them can come together and finally be a boxed group okay now i'm going to box them with is boxer it's a third-party application that is um kind of blessed by daybreak games the people that own everquest now that the license to everquest and everquest doing a couple other games um is boxer um, basically, when you click one or something on the account you're actively on, it sends that to all other EverQuest clients so that every EverQuest client will push one at the same time. It's a way to coordinate your efforts across multiple accounts. kind of neat. Um, I'll have a pro- probably a boxing tutorial at the point where I group all three of them up. Um, I'm just learning about it myself, too. Again, I wanted to say thanks, though, to Hammock J. He's a YouTuber that does EverQuest playthroughs and things like that. A link to his channel is in the video description if you want to check him out. It's got like 4,000 subs. No, 1.25K, something like that. Pretty small. Again, EverQuest is not a big community, so that makes sense. But uh, he does really good content. I learned, I'm learned. i learning a lot just from watching his stuff. So if you're a returning EverQuest player, check out his stuff because um, I'm gaining a lot out of that too. He has a bunch of tutorials about how to set up IS, IS Boxer and things like that. So go check him out. Moving on to the play style. Here's how I'm going to run this group. I'm going to run it as the original experience, kind of the, the experience as it exists now, just the common everyday experience. So bizarre is okay. Selling and trading on the bizarre is fine. Um, now, no group. I'm not going to group with other players or do any power leveling. Definitely no power leveling. But I'm, I'm the whole point is I'm running my own group, so I don't need to group with others. So I probably won't because I'm going to be playing during times when I. Yeah, I'm just going to record. I don't really like to play with others while I record. It's very hard to split my. It's already hard to split my attention between recording and playing the game, uh, let alone I'm going to be running three accounts, so it's going to be tough. I'm just just normal play like the old EQ days. I'm going to be picking up quests, going out, killing the mobs, looting the stuff, coming back, selling, you know, doing, you know, doing long quest lines, stuff like that, because there's going to be a focus on this playthrough at least, and this is how I play, a focus on quested and crafted gear. That stuff is not super easy to come by i'm not going to be buying all the best stuff out of the bazaar i'm going to be questing for my gear now am i going to buy uh i think again uh, again i'm returning player so defiant armor i think is what it's called am i going to be buying pieces of that i think if i can't find certain gear and i'm having a hard time then i might go to the bazaar to fill in some gaps if i can't find some gear but generally speaking that's gonna be a last resort for me if i can't quest some gear another thing you can do in everquest is you can kind of target farm certain pieces of gear like you can say hey my shoulders haven't been upgraded in a long time i'm going to go out and look at all the shoulders available for my class and race and stuff like that 
and I'm going to target one of those and do a quest off of it. Um, that's really cool. I'll probably be showing some of that. And I love doing that in EverQuest. Again, it's a thing in EverQuest. You can do in EverQuest. I don't feel like you can do in other games, especially not newer games. Um, newer games don't operate that way. Uh, when you go through um, you know, a brand new set of raid bosses, they drop a piece for every slot. right? You never have to think about, oh, I need to go over here and farm this one guy. You don't do that anymore. You just farm your way up the chain. you know. But EverQuest does still have a lot of that Go over here for the shoulders. Go over here, do that for legs or whatever. So I'll probably be doing stuff like that. This can be a play style of this, of this group. Content strategy, I'm not going to go over this too much. I don't know a lot about what I want to do. I know from 1 to 75, it's pretty much Hero's Journey. I'll show you what that is. It's part of the achievement area of EverQuest. Gives pretty decent drops for, for loot. Uh, the, the gear that drops out of those quests and achievements is pretty decent. Again, I could probably get better by buying it from the Czar on Defiant Gear, I'm sure. But I'm going to try to stay away from Defiant Gear. Again, only if my characters cannot handle you know, the, the leveling experience itself and, and I just keep dying or something, then I might go look for some upgrades. Epics. I will likely be doing all three of these characters' epics, but definitely Nether's epic I've already wanted to work on. I've already actually got most of the work done for the Fiery Defender Epic 1 for Nether Void. I've got all the swords. I've got the books are already done. I just have to kill the um, necromancer and then take all that stuff up to the plane of sky and turn it in. And I have the fire defender. So with this group, I'll be able to fight to kill that necromancer. I was going to try to do solo him the other day with a mercenary. And I'm, I'm too worried about it because there's so much that goes into that item. I have to give to him. I'd have to start that process over, like kill dragons and stuff like that. It's, it's a no way. So I'll fill this out as we go. Again, this goes up to 125. So there's a whole bunch of content that would be flooding in after 1 through 75. And I'll probably be breaking this up into the episode episodic stuff. If you can see down here, my episodic goals. Um, as I go along right now, I just don't know where I'm going yet. I'm just going to start leveling these guys uh, and just kind of finding out what I'm doing as I go. Uh, so there's that. Gear strategy, again, it's pending. Um, one thing that Hamrick J does that I really like, sorry if I'm messing up your name, I'm really bad with names, is he has a list of all the gear he thinks he's going to try to go after at certain levels. So I'll be doing a lot of that um, research. That's something you can do in this game. It's so cool. There are really good websites out there for EverQuest that tell you exactly what kind of gear's out there, how to get it, quest walkthroughs. People are posting in the quest. People over time have posted in the in there to help people out. It's going to be pretty amazing. Um, I'm going to wrap this up pretty soon because I got something to do. Party goals again. Nether definitely epic. Probably max out smithing. I've already got like 200 in smithing, I think, or something like that. But everybody will level to max. That's my goal. And these will evolve evolve over time too as I get back in the game and figure out what's out there and what I want to do. Um, probably each one of them will do one of a, a trade skill, right? Like tailoring smithing something else we'll see uh it's gonna be pretty fun so let me know in the comment section if you're excited about this and i hope to see you on the next video which will be the beginning of the series it'll just be aon maybe brenna for like buffs and stuff but uh it should be pretty fun and i hope you're excited as i as excited as i am and again glad to be firing up the channel again again uh thanks for coming back and watching and i will see you on the next one stay frosty